Pokemon Go is a lot of things. Fun, popular, social, but one thing it's not is informative, because the game doesn't really explain, well, anything. And as a result, there's a lot of rumors, myths, and hearsay floating around. So we're here to find out whether these myths are true, false, or somewhere in between. Hey, did you know that tapping the Pokeball after throwing it allows you to pick it back up? Hopefully not, because this was one of the earliest rumors going around that's completely false. No matter how many times we tried tapping it, it only resulted in us accidentally throwing more Pokeballs. And while it would be a nice feature, it would also seriously undermine the entire point of stopping by Pokestops to earn items like Pokeballs. And we're also pretty sure Neontic doesn't mind the fact you have the option to buy them too. There are tales of Pokemon being found in all kinds of context-sensitive places, like fire Pokemon at fire stations, or ghost Pokemon in graveyards. So does this one stand a ghost of a chance of being true? Not really. While it is possible to come across a ghastly Haunter or Gengar in a cemetery, it's the exact same odds you have of encountering anything else, too. Plus, it might be pretty tactless to encounter ghost Pokemon in a place meant to respect those who have passed on. So consider this rumor, uh, not dead, that would be insensitive. Fainted? Aw oh, man, it's raining. That means I can't play Pokemon Go until it's stopped. Wait a minute, there might be water Pokemon out there now. Except, no, that's not how Go works. The game only tracks your location, not the weather patterns. Besides, Neontic wouldn't want to encourage people to go out in the rain or hail. Just wait for a sunny day to continue hunting. Everyone wants an Eevee and its three evolutions, which appear to be randomly chosen during the evolution process. So it's perhaps no great surprise that when a trick was revealed that allowed you to choose exactly which evolution you got, it spread like wildfire. According to the trick, whichever of the three special attacks your Eevee has determines what it'll evolve into. Dig for Flareon, Swift for Vaporeon, and Body Slam for Jolteon. Pretty handy, right? There's just one small problem. It's completely wrong, but that hasn't stopped it from still being shared as common knowledge. Although, another Eevee myth is starting to take its place. Once that Eevee myth was debunked, another soon took its place. It was reported that if a player changes the Eevee's nickname to either Sparky, Pyro, or Rainer, based on the characters from the anime, it will determine what the Eevee evolves into. So Sparky for Jolteon, Pyro for Flareon, and Rainer for Vaporeon. Now let's be honest, this sounds completely insane and could in no way actually affect what Eevee evolves into. And yet, it seems to be totally true. Not only have we tested it multiple times and each one provided the Eevee we wanted, but hundreds of others have confirmed it as well. It's a heck of an easter egg to the anime and the best way to get the Eevee evolution that you want. One of the bigger mysteries in Pokemon Go, at first, was what did the pulsating nearby icon mean? Except it didn't remain a mystery for long, as it quickly became accepted that it pulsates faster the closer you got to the Pokemon you're trying to track down, allowing you to use it a bit like a radar. Which would be awesome. Except, yeah, you know where this is going. That's not how it works. At all. Instead, the pulses indicate a new Pokemon has entered the list, and you are getting closer to it. Because of this, many people became convinced that highlighting a Pokemon and walking in the direction of when the pulses occurred would act as a radar to find that Pokemon. And because there was already a Pokemon near you, it often seemed to work. But again, this is simply another case of coincidences being misinterpreted. It has recently come out that there may be exclusive Pokemon for each continent that Pokemon Go is currently available in, based on the fact that people have reported to only see Tauros in North America, Kangaskhan in Australia, Mr. Mime in Europe, and Farfetch'd in Asia. And with the mass amount of anecdotal evidence, it seems there may just be something to this. However, we have also heard reports of people seeing Pokemon outside of those regions, albeit with little proof. But that's where you come in. Have you encountered any of those four Pokemon in the wild on a different continent? Let us know in the comments and make sure to tweet photographic evidence to us at GameXplain so we can try and solve this once and for all. These are some of the most predominant myths in Pokemon Go. A few are true, but most are false, and many others are almost certain to pop up. And as always, let us know if there are any other tips for Pokemon Go as well. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe to GameXplain for more on Pokemon and other things gaming.